Hello everyone. In this lecture I want to talk about caching. I want to explain what caching is, how do I know it will help your search engine rankings, and how can you implement caching on your website. So let's start. What is cache? Cache is basically a stored version of your website, which means that every time a user enters one of your pages, his browser doesn't have to load all the files and all the scripts of your website, it just gets a stored view that it already has and the result is much faster loading and better user experience for your users. But how can we be sure that Google really takes this seriously and really using this information if you have cache or you don't have cache on your website in order to rank our website? So this is why I want to show you this page on Google Developers, HTTP caching. In this page, Google are teaching us what is caching, what is so good for your website, and how can you do it. Second of all, we know caching makes much better user experience for users. And what Google really wants is their users and the people that search on Google to have good user experience when they go to one of the websites they found on search results. And the third thing, is that we know that caching is always something Google show you on Google's PageSpeed Insights. When you search your website in order to see the score it gets on PageSpeed Insights, if your website won't have cache, Google will tell you to leverage your caching. So this is how we know that they can use this information in order to rank better websites higher on search results. So how can you enable caching on your website? So if you're a developer and you want to use the hard way, you can use the htaccess file. By searching htaccess code caching, I got these three websites right here. Well, all three of them show me kind of a similar code in order to make caching on a website, but we don't really want to use the hard way. We want to do it in a simple way. So if you're using Joomla, there are two things you can do. First of all, I found out you can actually enable caching on Joomla's global configurations. So this is one way you can do it if you have Joomla. The second way is by using this extension, cache control. Well, I don't really use Joomla, so I never try this cache control extension, but it seems to have a really good result. So if you're using Joomla, this is one of the things you want to try. If you're using WordPress, which I do, you have two very famous plugins for caching. The first one is W3 Total Cache, and the second one is WP Super Cache. Well, actually, they're both are very common and very famous in WordPress community, and they are very simple to use. The only thing you have to make sure when you're using one of them is go to settings and set your cache timeout to this number of seconds. After you're enabling the caching on your website with whatever CMS you're using, I want you to check if your caching really works. So let's go to this website, seositecheckup.com slash tools slash page cache test server side caching. Let's search, kindly convert. The score is 100 from 100. So this is how I know and I can be 100% sure that caching really works on my website. So we learned that caching is really important. It creates better user experience for users, which means that Google and other search engines are really pushing us to enable caching on our website and probably using caching as a ranking factor. We learn how to enable caching on our website and how to make sure and check that caching really works. So this is what I want you to do in your website. Check and make sure that caching is really working on your website. And after you finish this step, you can move on to the next lecture.